Well, welcome into our podcast number eight. It's episode number eight, and uh, we are going to be broadcasting live from the Cameron Studio Podcast. And we are so uh, grateful that you could join us today. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about fall sports coming up, and we're going to talk about how the summer concluded and get ready for the busy season. We always talked about uh, after the 4th of July, it seems that summer kind of disappears on us. You know, you look up and it's like, oh, the last week of July, and then, hello, welcome into August, <laughs> the beginning of the month. And, uh, you know, when school used to start like after Labor Day in September, throw that out. Uh, we're always uh, kind of in that August time frame. So joining us today as our special guest from the Lawn Public Schools is Gary Dees. And he's the athletic director for all three schools and kind of oversees things. And before we start getting into the season aspect of it, I want to be able to uh, talk a little bit about uh, something that you and I have been involved in. And it's almost like takes a whole year to go do and put together behind the scenes that you did not know is uh, this golf tournament. It's the Lawton Athletics Foundation. Uh, this was their 25th year. It was is on Monday at the Lawton Country Club. Uh, Mondays are a, a day off from the golf courses, but we got to thank Johnny and the Lawton Country Club for allowing uh, us to be able to have that. But all of it benefits uh, the Lawton Public Schools. And so uh, I know it used to be called the Gridiron. And, and then there was some talk about, OK, well, why don't we just open this up to all athletics? So then if people wanted to earmark money, if they were going to donate to know that it was going to go to any program, whether it be for golf or tennis or volleyball, softball and, of course, football. And that was done. So why don't you give us kind of your take on uh, how things went? I know we probably don't have an official number or maybe we do getting close to the official number but how how did monday come across oh look it was real great and to go back to what you're saying earlier this tournament started as a football only um tournament um but when they brought it back it was it they didn't have it for a few years when they brought it back it was uh you know for all sports so any of that money could be given to, to any sport you know if they participated in the event they would get some money and you could also earmark that uh money toward uh whatever sport they wanted to go to um, we did change the name to make that more transparent that that's what we were doing. Um, so instead of just the gridiron, it's the all sports uh, gridiron. Uh, just the name just implies that everybody can take advantage of uh, of the funds that are raised through this tournament. But the day was great. I mean, uh, you know how it, how it goes. We have a, a lot of planning, a lot of Wednesdays where we meet and go over things. There's a lot of uh, uh, planning that has to be done with the meal that we have and with the tournament and how we're going to run things and who's responsible for what. But uh, everybody showed up at six in the morning uh, on Monday and everybody was ready to work and we got after it. And there was a lot of set up stuff, set up signs, set up banners and stuff like that, um, set up tents, the grills. And, and, you know, we had a really good meal this year. So um, um, like I said, Daryl Jones is great with that. And he's one of the hardest workers I've, I've ever been around. He, uh, he's uh you can't get him to sit down. I mean, sometimes you're like Daryl, <laughs> sit down a little bit and rest a little bit, but uh, he just keeps going. I, I, he's he's a good one. Yeah, Daryl Jones, Jones Seed, and uh, you know, Bart, uh, instrumental of, of making this happen last year, kind of took uh, the hiatus of not uh, being able to put that together. But uh, there is a lot of after hours. I know you're involved in it. You and I both serve on that, you know, to kind of get ideas of how to do it. But you know, the community really comes in, in a big way, uh, you know, to come. And I know it could be a hot day. You know, we we've even uh, thrown around of of maybe choosing a different date, so it's not that way. But you just never can anticipate it. We always like to have it where it's the kickoff of a new season and so i think in oklahoma people are used to the weather anyway and they know okay it could be a semi hot day it could be an extremely hot day but i think all in all everybody was happy to a little bit of a win there and as you said you, you got it started early uh, a lot of participation between the coaches and players and they volunteered their time to work holes to, to bring water to to add ice and and so it really you know as they say it takes a village uh really came together um do you know how many off the top of your head? I know we had two sessions, morning and afternoon. How many golfers we had this year? I think we had uh, 33 teams is what we had. Okay. Um, so and, and right now we think – I don't have a final number, but we think it's around $70,000 that we've raised. Okay. Uh, that would go to the three high schools in their sports. 
Well, and you know, that is really awesome because it's it's not only the golfers who, you know, pay you know, to have a little bit of fun and, and of course have that camaraderie, uh, but also it's those title sponsors. You know, in a classic Chevrolet donated like $15,000 and there's others at $5,000. I don't have the complete list in front of me, but I, I know they've been thanked quite a bit and, and will be continued to. Uh, and that's really where the crux of this. But let's get the breakdown of, you know, since it is, isn't the gridiron and it's not just for football. Uh, how does this help you as far as athletic director to give a check spread out between the three cool schools for about $70,000? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I feel blessed uh, right now being the athletic director. This is a good time in, in Lawton to be the athletic director and to be involved in sports. We have great, a great commitment by our administration, Mr. Heim. Um, he's supported us in, in every way imaginable and some of the stuff that we're doing we'll talk about later, but it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, but, you know, there's always uh, needs for stuff and or wants for stuff. And so this money is important to get out to our uh, coordinators and get out to the coaches and the players. And, um, you know, it can be used for buying helmets, buying uniforms, uh, anything that they need, anything that's for the athlete. That's what we want this money to be for. So we want all this money to go directly back and impact athletes. And that, that's the whole reason for the tournament. How nice is it to have this as an addition to your budget that the school gives? So talked about the support that you've got, but this is an extra added. And, and you know how funds go. I mean, things expensive. And we talk about helmets and getting those and uniforms. Uh, that's an expensive venture. So this $70,000, I know, you know, it's just, is it a lot? Yes, I, I think it goes a long way. Yeah, it does go a long way. And like I said, it just gives it uh, all the the, the – teams and athletes a little bit more room to if there's something that you need uh, uh, to be able to purchase that stuff. And uh, it's just a blessing to add that on top of what we are already supporting them with, which is quite a bit. Well, and if you missed it this year, make plans for next year for the 26th annual for the Lawn Athletic Foundation uh, who is going to put on this golf tournament, and we'd love to have you a part of it. You can help sponsor that, and, and you know you can actually give before that, too, uh, you know, for, for Lawn Athletics. If you say, well, I missed it, and, you know, I have the opportunity to be able to do that, uh, I'm sure Gary will, uh, you know, <laughs> take your check very kindly, so we, we appreciate that as well. Okay, I'm going to transfer now into the next section of, of fall sports, right? I mean, I know I've already seen online uh, some scrimmages already being taking place in volleyball. You got before we talk football, and that's really kind of the start of the end of August, first part of September. But, you know, you may want to remember that we've got girls sports uh, with softball and volleyball, and that is set to start right away, right? Yeah, they started uh, July 15th, uh, and so they're really close to start playing games. Um, I, this morning over here at Lawton High, they were they had a scrimmage going on, and I think they had one at MacArthur as well. Volleyball's starting up, cross country starting up. So yeah, uh, the girls' sports they get started first, and um, you know they get going and they play their season right off the bat. So we're excited to to, to see them and see how they do this year. Gary D is our guest uh, for the uh, Lawton Athletic uh, Department for the point after, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the fields. Uh, we talked about this. We had you on a guest before, and, and we were so. I was so impressed with the funds that were given to allocate not just a gradual change, but an immediate change to three different fields on all three schools all going on at the same time. And we're talking about a new baseball field, a new softball field, and a new football field. And the football field even got bleachers and a press box. So I had to tell my my youngest, who lives in Tulsa, and he doesn't get around here much, he didn't really know about it. And I think, well, you don't really know about it until you talk about it. And unless you live by the school and you kind of drive by, I've encouraged people to go out to the track over there and, you know, the football field and, and walk around and see uh, the upgrades to it. Uh, you know, this the bond issue that was passed and the money's allocated to it. But I guess the next question, and I know a little bit uh, from asking the same questions that people will ask, how much will it be used? Who will use it? Who will use it first? I, I know that the facilities aren't ready for necessarily a varsity football game, but let's talk about uh, can freshmen and JV play there, and is that going to happen this year? Yes, that will happen this year. And one thing that we did to allow that to happen as well, on top of what you mentioned, is we added lights to our football fields. Um, also, on our softball fields, we we uh, built them new uh, dugouts and everything that needs to be in a dugout. We we got that for them. But um, as far as football goes, we will uh, we will play our JV and middle school games there at the home sites, and I, that's kind of exciting to me. 
Um, you know, it's just where the people live. Maybe they will have better support from uh, our students and stuff or, or being closer to some of these uh, facilities. And, um, and and they're just so impressive. I just I just can't wait to to see a, a game played at, at one of these home sites. It's, we've never it's never been possible before. And and, and we're moving forward and it's going forward. There's, we have an opportunity to maybe play a high school game there. Um, you know, we play at Cameron and we all probably always have to play our inner city games there, but there may be some games that we can earmark and move those to the high school. And it just, I mean, it means a lot for the, for the coaches and the players, they take ownership of these fields and they have the Wolverine or the, you know, Highlander or the Eagle on the, on the, on the field and everything. And you don't have to load up a bus and, and move people to another spot and equipment to another spot. So um, yeah, it's a JV games in middle school and we're happy that we've, what we, with what we've got and what we've done. Well, I know that, you know, you're still continuing with the facilities, whether it be restrooms, you mentioned the, and their lights, their LED lights. And they were playing around with that. Uh, David Stanley over at Lawton High was talking about, you know, you can make them all red. You know, you can, just like if you've been to an OU game and they do the LED lights, they can change, they can flash, you know, stuff that you couldn't do. If you shut the lights off, you know, back in our day, it took about 20 minutes for the lights to get warm back up. So you couldn't do anything like that. But LEDs instantly. So LED lighting, uh, home field advantage. And I know that other sports will get to use that in the spring. We'll talk about maybe soccer using that as well uh, as home, a true home uh, field advantage, you know, from your school. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. That's really a nice addition. And so I, I wanted to make sure that people understood that uh, that's where you're going to be able to find some JV games out there for football this year is uh, Eisenhower, MacArthur, and Lawton High. And I think that's uh, that's really a, a testament of, of what's been put into these programs. And I think I'm going to echo what you said. It's a good time to be an athletic director for Lawton Public Schools because a lot of exciting things are going on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about tickets, uh, prices. Are they about the same? And then this has really been the uh, digital age of and, and accessible. And, and I went to an OU game for the first time in, in I don't know how long, but it was on my phone. I mean, you don't get any tickets anymore. Everybody's used to making a digital download. So, yeah, your tickets are on your phone, and then they just, you know, click it in when you come through. So talk a little bit about uh, tickets, how, how available, and uh, what's going to happen for this year. Yeah, tickets will be the same price as they were last year, $10 for a high school game. Um, six dollars for a JV middle school game, um, but we uh, what we do is we use GoFan and it's an app on on the iPhone or if you have an Android on the Android, and you can purchase tickets there before you get to the stadium. You can avoid the the line to buy tickets and you can go straight to the gate. Um, you can show them uh, that you purchased the tickets. They can click off and uh, show that you've used the tickets. Um, so yeah, the app is really great uh, and. It's a lot more convenient. You can use Apple Pay. I think there's also Google Pay you can use. So it's just more convenient for uh, people that want to use that method. Um, so and we work great with them. So yeah, you know, it's it's becoming a digital age, and and that's like I mentioned the OU thing about the realities of tickets. You know, one thing it 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 got rid of is you didn't see anybody on the corners trying to scalp tickets and sell tickets because it was all done digitally, you know, so that what do you think percentage, you know, I'm sure communities that's uh, varies. And I know really they push this app during playoff time because, you know, it's so last minute, you don't know if your team's going to make it. So that's another incentive to get on that program app wise. What percentage uh, of people around here are using that app? Do you think? I would say about 10%. It's growing every year. Um, you know, we, we put it out there. We put signs at the stadium with QR codes that link to it. Um, but you're right. If you're going to go to any playoff game, uh, a lot of times it's that's what they take. You, you have to use the app, the app uh, yeah. for admission. Um, so I think it's something just over time is going to continue to grow. Um, just like anything else, I, you know, when people learn about it and, and figure out that it's a pretty easy method or, or, or a way of getting that ticket and avoiding lines. And um, I think it'll just grow from here. I, I think so too, and, and that's when I was awakened by the OU experience last year about that. And the and the thing is, is that everything is so digital, and and people can you know use PayPal. They can use. I mean, they immediately have these transactions to paying people. Uh, Cash App is another thing that's instant, goes right into the account, and uh, and so maybe in a couple of years it will it'll be ten percent 
on the other side that's just using a, a ticket and that 90 percent of the people are all digital because you know that's where that sure is not. that's the yeah. current state so uh but yeah another little plug to say that you know for playoffs since that's the only way they're going to take it uh, you might as well get used to that's going to be the process. So you kind of slow in that kind of makes your staff a little bit easier when you're having to print off all of those tickets because uh, that's an undertaking in itself. Oh, correct. Yeah, that's, that's a big undertaking. Um, and yeah, so in, in it, but it just it would make everything run smoother as far as, uh, you know, like I said, lines and stuff. And, you know, if it gets to a point where you said that 90 percent of the people are using this, it would mean that you would need less people to sell the tickets. Um so yeah, it's positive all the way around, and, and that's where we're going. Everything's digital. Um, I would imagine in five years that there'll be a lot of places that that may not take. I don't know, but I, I know it's digital is the way the way we're headed. Yeah, that's uh, that's not just the future. That's uh, that's the present, you know. And er everybody's just going to have to jump on board. Okay, so excited to talk about the season getting up. We talked about the girls starting football coming up around the right around the corner. Something that you're going to be aware to that this is going to be. And it was kind of. Not it wasn't solidified last year as the reality, but you know because of all the the changes in the district and who went where. Wow, what a zero week! Let's let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, at the last minute, you're going to have MacArthur on a Thursday playing Elgin for a zero week. That is going to be a packed house on both sides. So you want to get your tickets early for that. And then uh, Lawton High and Eisenhower because you know Lawton High is going to go to 5A and Eisenhower is in 6A, and so uh, they aren't going to play each other in the district. So it's a non-district game, and we're going to get this back to what people are used to seeing is that plan reunions around it, you know, get, get the date down that that's going to be a, a, a zero week a game as well. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. So the other, the, the first weekend week zero that we're going to play is, is a monster week. I mean, um, we love welcoming over Elgin to, to come play us and, and they bring their fans and they're, they're passionate about uh, their district, just like we are about ours. Um, so that's, that's a huge game on that Thursday night, uh, MacArthur and Elgin. And then the next night, um, Lot and High and Eisenhower used to be the first game uh, that was changed. Um, but now since zero week is kind of – the coaches like zero week because it allows them to have a buy somewhere maybe before you start district play. So um, they moved that game, and now that's really the uh, first Friday night of the of the season. So there's a lot of excitement about it. You know, um, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, you brought the game back to the first week. Well, it's not necessarily <laughs> zero week, but still right. a lot of excitement around it. Yeah, I mean, because uh, there's a lot to prove. You got a, a new head coach there at Lawton High. Uh, you got Eisenhower that's going to move up to 6A. So a lot of questions. Uh, you got some returners uh, for Eisenhower that an injury that they get back, they get some uh, experience. And so, and then, you know, as far as the new head coach for Lawton High, you know, the anticipation is, well, we don't know what we're going to expect. You know, it will be uh, unveiled for the first time that night. So, uh, you know, with all the emotions of that game already and what that means here locally, uh, makes for a great uh, zero week to kick off, I guess, at Cameron Stadium. Yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait for it to for us to kick it off. Uh, like I said, that Thursday night game is incredible, and then uh, the Friday night game, um, and it, it it does feel like uh, back in the day when we used to play that game first. There's a there's a certain kind of feeling I, that uh, yeah. people have about it, and and um, so I I can't wait to see how our teams do. I know there's a lot of excitement around all our teams, and uh, you know there's excitement about Brett and his team at MacArthur and Javon and his team at Eisenhower, and then. Like Lorenzo uh, Williams, our new coach at Lot and High, um, we're so excited to see what he brings to the table. Um, so yeah, we're just excited about kicking it off and getting it going. Yeah, so I mean, this is the best time of the year for fans like us that, that like this. And I always temper that to say, don't get too excited because we're going to look up and we're going to be in week five already because that's how fast this stuff goes. It's just that's the way, uh, you know, our seasons go. And, you know, so we will kind of keep an eye on that. But glad to have that. Uh, and, Gary, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for all of what you've done for uh, the uh, golf tournament this past Monday. I know it was a tiring day for you because I left before you did. And you, you went you were there before the sun came up and almost left when the sun went down. So it was it was a very busy day, but I know successful and and you guys are going to use those funds wisely. So I, I'm, I'm grateful for that. OK, we appreciate you, Eric. Thank you. All right. So Gary, uh, Gary Dees, athletic director for the Lawton Public Schools and uh, talked about that golf tournament uh, for the Lawton Athletic Foundation. Talked a little bit about, uh, you know, getting online to buy your tickets. 
uh, for the GoFan app and download that. And we also talked about facilities. We talked about the upgrades and how uh, JV football are going to be played on their home fields for the first time. So you want to check that out and check out the new LED lights and the press box and the stands there at all three of the high schools. Can't wait to, to see that. Don't forget uh, the 12 schools in the network. It's easy for us to be accessible to you where you live. So access us on your Apple and Android phones. It's free to download. It's free to watch. And you can watch all of the content. I was just talking to someone that had known us for a long time, but was going to our website. And there's nothing wrong with that, going to our website to link into the schools. And I said, I'm telling you, the app is the way to go. And here's that we're using that word again, app, is when you download the app, I can watch Law and High. And then on the same app, I can bounce out and go check out MacArthur. And then I can watch Eisenhower or Altus or Carl Albert and all at the same time. And then also in your home devices, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. And that's free to download as well. And it's in your home. So if you can't make the game, you can watch it. And then watch us on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then all our social media, connect to us there. Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok. I just say that we are there where you live. So if you live on any social media platform, that's where you can find us. So for Gary Dees, for the Lawton Athletic Director, and for myself, Eric Sherum, you've been watching a presentation of The Point After on the Oklahoma Sports where sports is our middle name. We are the Oklahoma Sports Network.